Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking for a bit about the big map <clears throat> for uh, Chivalry Total War Remastered, for uh, Rome Total War Remastered. And uh, this map, I have to say, has, is shaping up to be one of the most beautiful Total War maps and campaigns I've ever seen. It's so historically accurate. It's The start positions are just phenomenal. The, the banners the it's just amazing it's been amazing work by a tromb and by Kersey, of course the map maker and a tromb who um finished the adaptation of the map for uh, chivalry remastered and Kersey's big map it's just this is kind of a hybrid between Kersey's really big map and it it sort of cut off uh india and it's a little bit smaller, but the size is just phenomenal. You've all seen it on my channel before. But I just want to talk about it again because, as you can see, a lot of the graphics and descriptions and everything have been <clears throat> completed. It's just very stable indeed. And it's one of the most detailed Total War campaigns ever made as well because, because the map is so large, it can fit a lot of detail and it can even have factions like the Kingdom of Artsakh and Bach here at the 1072 start date. So let's actually uh, get into the campaign here and I'm going to talk for a little bit about uh, the Kingdom of Artsakh today. And I'm going to talk about its status um, today as well. So this is going to be a little bit more of a historical video. but. I think this is important because not only is it relevant for current events, but uh, it, this is also, I believe, the only Total War mod to include the Kingdom of Artsakh as a playable faction in any uh, campaign. So uh, that's why I'm going to bring this up uh, today. Now, uh, the, the Kingdom of Artsakh and Bach is also playable in the uh, early era campaign in vanilla chivalry remastered so if you have the smaller map or if you prefer smaller maps you can play it there as well without having to download the big map uh, so actually <clears throat> but its start position here in the big map is a little bit more precise and the region is more precise as well as well as the other regions too thanks to the amazing work by a tromp now uh, the Kingdom of Artsakh and Bach is kind of an amalgam faction representing two uh, kingdoms that existed at the start date here in uh, southern Armenia as well as in Artsakh to today. And uh, this is the kingdoms, uh, these are the kingdoms of Artsakh and Bach. So there was a kingdom under the control of the Sunid dynasty, and it was kind of called a Sunik. You could say and it sort of encompassed this region the southern part was based at a fortress called barabert and kapan as well and uh, that was in this region right here and that's um and kapan was kind of the administrative capital and barabert was kind of the uh, military capital you could say the fortress right next to kapan it's right by it and uh, the kingdom of Artsakh was a little bit more to the northeast here in this mountainous region. And that its capital was uh, Hachin. And it, it had different regions as well. And uh, technically these kingdoms were separate at the start date here in 1072. Kingdom of Bach is more notable and it's more known because it sort of resisted Seljuk control in uh, the 11th century and the 12th century until it um, collapsed near the end of the 12th century and it was ruled again by the Sunid dynasty famous for its uh, 5th century antics during the Armenian Persian Wars and uh, the kingdom of Artsakh and Bach as a united kingdom only appears in the 13th century under uh, Prince Hassan Jalal who was able to sort of uh, conquer this uh, region in uh, uh, southern eastern Armenia and create a combined kingdom of Artsakh and Bach according to his uh, correspondence. 
and primary sources from the period that's what this kingdom was called the name sort of shifts but we know from the geography of uh, the kingdom of Armenia and greater Armenia by the 7th, 8th, and 9th century sources that this province here was called Artsakh in the sort of mountainous region and then over here is the Sunik area but there were different names for the different regions as well. In modern times this region here is called Sunik and then Vyotsor is up a little bit north where the Orbelian noble family then uh, took root and then of course in the east this is Artsakh which is controlled uh, primarily by the de facto Republic of Artsakh or Republic of nagorno karabakh and uh, recently due to uh, an aggressive war by the neighboring Republic of Azerbaijan in late 2020 much of the region came under the control of Azerbaijan following their uh, military uh, victory on the battlefield there in the 44-day war. Now, why am I bringing this up today? Because right now, what remains of the Republic of Artsakh, which is connected to Armenia by a small strip of land called the Lachin Corridor, is uh, uh, right now it's under siege by Azerbaijan. It's been under siege for 280 days as of the recording of this video. And Honestly, this siege has become very, very barbaric. You could say it's a very horrible humanitarian catastrophe. There are very few medical supplies remaining in the territory of the Republic of Artsakh. Uh, there have been victims of malnutrition who have died due to malnutrition. Uh, families have to wait in line for hours, basically all day, in order to receive a loaf of bread as a ration. Uh, children go to school without lunch. Um, people who live outside of the city are in a very horrible state because it's very difficult to get food transported to them due to the lack of fuel due to the blockade. Uh, internet connection is very sporadic due to lack of electricity and electrical power. So 120,000 people, the population of the Republic of Artsakh, uh, have been under siege for, again, 280 days. And um, I'm not going to get into the political games uh, of this because this is not the place to do it. But I just want to raise a little bit of awareness of this issue. I have another channel where I talk uh, about where I made a video about uh, propaganda kind of surrounding this issue. You can check out the card that I'm going to put at the top right about that. And I encourage you check it out because it's really a bad situation. It's very difficult. I um, it's it's a difficult issue and I don't want to delve into it anymore here, but I will leave some links in the description on maybe how you can help out. But if you, um, if you spread the word to family, friends, uh, people who might be interested in this issue, I highly suggest you do so because that's all of that is going to help in the long run, help lift the blockade, lift the siege, and sort of end this humanitarian catastrophe for the Armenian population of the Republic of Artsakh, Nagorno, Karabakh. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to tell you today. So if you want to play as the Kingdom of Artsakh from the 11th and 12th and 13th centuries, you can in uh, Chivalry Remastered for a Total War Rome Remastered. So if that makes you dust off your copy of uh, Rome Remastered, then I mean, that that will help as well. Play it, uh, play it on your own channels. Um, it's a fully fleshed out faction. It's got a full unit roster. It's a very difficult start date and it's a very difficult starting position. You have one province and then uh, you are right next to the giant Grand Seljuk Empire and the Shadadid Emirates to the northwest. So you're in a very difficult position. But in any case, um, yeah, thank you for listening to the video. Thank you for watching. 
If you enjoy videos about the historical Total Wars and their mods, consider liking this video, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one later.